Hello, and welcome to the Mommy Escape Time podcast. I'm Lauren. I'm a wife and a new mom. I came up with the idea of this podcast after struggling to find mommy groups around me when my son was born. I wanted a community of mothers I heard so many of my friends talk about when they had their children. This podcast is to help mothers like me that want a community of mothers to connect with when they have their free time. Together with my usual guest, Taryn, and other mothers, we will share our experiences, not our advice, through motherhood, and hopefully get some tips from you, the listeners. So come join us on the Mommy Escape Time podcast. Hello, and welcome to Mommy Escape Time. Today is episode number 11, and today I'm here with Taryn. Hi, Taryn. Hi. And today is one of those days you've all been waiting for. We mm-hmm. are going to talk about Taryn and her pregnancy journey. Oh, it's so exciting. I know. <laughs> so how today is going to work, we're not really sure. We're definitely going to talk about Taryn's pregnancy journey. We're not sure. We don't want the episode to run too long. So um, if it if we can fit in the birth story, we will. If we can't, that'll be yeah. a whole other episode. Um, we're just going to kind of see how it goes. And to be upfront, this is going to be a clean episode. So we're not going to describe everything in detail. <laughs> and there are some things that we're just going to say that you all are just going to understand. <laughs> <laughs> and if not, you can leave a comment and we right. can clarify. Right. Maybe uh, one-on-one. One-on-one. Yes. yes. <laughs> so um, that's part of it is that we need to keep the episode clean so we can't... Um, we can't uh, keep talking about uh, certain things in pregnancy. That's what books are for, right? <laughs> so, and then... Um, Those are the things I tell my high school students to really freak them out when they're in child development. And I'm like, listen. Right. That, that's when those things come out. And they're, then they're like, oh, yeah, I'm all set. Good. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, um, right. So we're going to talk about Taryn today. We're not going to talk about me at all. Uh, we'll save that for... Oh my gosh, next year, 2019. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. uh, We could talk about that. Um, Taryn was with me my entire pregnancy, so she... She was not there in the delivery room. No. But she, <laughs> I, I was a, um, an emotional support, support right, for yes. the entire pregnancy. Exactly. So, um, yeah, so that that easily could be its own episode just there. So um, we're going to just start off with um, finding out when you were pregnant, um, and we'll go from there. So how did you find out you were pregnant? So we had been trying and um I just kind of was like whatever when it happens it happens no big deal so we went to visit my sister in Virginia and I was having such bad heartburn and I was like oh my god what's going on and I thought um and I believe we've talked about this me not eating gluten I thought maybe I was eating gluten somewhere in my diet that I was unsure of and I could not put my finger on it and my sister who is also uh in the same stage of her life as me was like oh I have plenty of pregnancy tests just take one and I was like no I'm just gonna wait till I get home it's no big deal it's just two more days whatever and (laughs) she dragged me into the bathroom and was like here when you're ready so it was early in the morning my husband was sleeping And I was like, okay, fine. Um, Took the pregnancy test and threw it out because it was very faint. And I said, yeah, I don't really know. I'm not sure. And my sister then went into the garbage and was like, hey, um, you're bleeping pregnant. (laughs) So that's how I found out, um, which was a shock. Um, And I went into the bedroom where my husband was asleep. And I said, hey, guess what? we're pregnant. And he said, are we having the babies today? (laughs) It's like, no, go back to sleep. We'll talk later. Um, (laughs) And then it took like the whole day for it to sink in that my pregnancy test was positive. Um, So that was in the middle of November that we found out. Um, like right before Thanksgiving. Right before Thanksgiving. Um, and that explained the, the heartburn, too. I was like, right. okay. So it's not what I'm eating. It's that my <laughs> body is like, whoa, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, yeah. So 
if you do want to hear about Taryn and her gluten, just go back to our food episode. Yeah. You can hear about that. So you find out, are you one of those people who like rushed to talk, call the doctor right away? Or did you like let it sit for a little while? You know, I let it sit for a little while. I was on vacation visiting my sister uh, and I was like, well, it's not going to change between now and when we get home. And having read horror stories about miscarriages, I was like, ah, we're not telling anybody until we are absolutely certain that this this is happening. Right. Because um, when you take a pregnancy test, that's very, it's what, you, two weeks? Yeah. Yeah. yeah if that. If yeah. that. Right. Because it was like, uh, if it's three days late, you right, can. Yeah, and I, I was know. like, that seems really soon, which is another reason why I was like, yeah, I'm not going to test now. It's right. too soon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, of course, as soon as we got home, I got one of the, like, the clear blue easy that right. says pregnant and not pregnant. <laughs> with words. With yeah. words. I was like, I just need to see it with my own eyes. And sure enough, it was it said pregnant. And I was like, OK. Yeah. Here we go. Get me some creamed spinach and some pineapple right away. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Um, now, did you um, – so when did you contact your doctor? Um. Probably that week we got back. So we came back on a Sunday night and probably by the end of that week I'd called and said that I had a pregnancy test that said it was positive and they asked about some information and I told them and they said, well, you don't need to come in for a few more weeks. You want to be at least eight weeks into the pregnancy um, before we do an ultrasound or anything. So that's so, like a month after you find out? Yeah, so it was yeah. about a month after I found out. Um, Which when you think about it, it's like, obviously there's a reason that they do that because, you know, you're not, that's like the worst time when you're not sure yeah. if it's going to stick or not. And right. It's so stressful and it's like you finally get pregnant and then it's like nothing. You can't yeah. tell anyone. And right. You're not going to the doctor. And so you're, yeah, you're <laughs> quietly celebrating and hoping that it stays in there right. and does what it needs to do. But no one can know. Right. And you can't get too excited because you don't know what's going to happen. Right. So I would, I would talk to my sister a lot and be like, well, you know, I'm still nauseous. So <laughs> that's a good sign, I think. But am I not nauseous enough? Am I too nauseous? Like, who do I, 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 and I was one of my first friends to, to be pregnant. be pregnant. So I had no point of reference. Right. So I was just hoping that everything was going as it was supposed to. And then I would lay on my stomach and I would be like, is that my stomach okay? Oh my gosh. Like, what if I crush them? What, what, well, actually not them at the time. I was like, what if I crush it? What if there are two? What, what if, what if there are five? Like, what if they're mutants? Like all of these things are going through my head and like, is it really happening? Like they're like panic was right. coursing through my, which I'm sure was great for right. the kids that were growing inside of me. Um, but all of these unknowns and all I had was a pregnancy test to go off of. Right. Like there was, I didn't hear a heartbeat. I didn't, there was nothing. Did your doctor send you for blood work before you came in? Do you remember? I know this. Um, gosh, it was a long time ago. I don't think so. Yeah. I think they said, come in, we'll make the appointment. And so I made the appointment and after I made the appointment, then they sent me for blood work. Okay. Yeah. So... I yeah. had no idea. Wow. Yeah. So were you one of those people at the very beginning before, like early on, were you an internet person, like every symptom or any everything, just looking on the internet for it? You know, my sister was so into researching symptoms and would call me and the same thing, well, I'm feeling this way and maybe it's because I'm pregnant, maybe not, but this is how I'm feeling. So I kind of relaxed about it and was like, Oh, I feel nauseous. I'm sure it's pregnancy. And I had like all the typical ones and then a few atypical symptoms. And I'd be like, like what? Um, migraines. Wow. I had awful, awful migraines, which I had experienced previously, right. but hadn't for like two or three years. And all of a sudden I was getting them like crazy. And they're actually what made me sick. I didn't have morning sickness, like in the typical, not the way you had morning sickness. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the migraines would make me sick. 
Uh, and I was like, gosh, do I also have a brain tumor? Like, what's going on? Because, of course, right, that's I where your go mind to the goes. worst case scenario. And um, I wonder, like, your hormones at that point, if it makes you almost go to those bad places or worst case scenarios right. all the time. Yeah. I, You know, I think so. And I don't think they leave because I still do it to this day. Like, right. I don't see my kids. And I'm like, oh, my God, where are they? They're dead. They're in a ditch somewhere. They they, yeah. they were kidnapped. What's going on? I don't know. So, so, yeah, I think it's just like that maternal instinct that like, oh, what if it is the worst? I need to fix this now so I can be there for my family. Right. Um. So, so with that symptom, I actually did call my doctor because I was like, um, right. this is, this is not, I don't think this is typical. What should I do? But everything else, I was like, it's just going to happen, whatever right. it'll be. And my mom, who's a nurse, is like my own personal nurse. So I text her all the time or call her and say like, I'm experiencing whatever, fill in the blank symptom. You know, right. is this normal? Oh, yeah, don't worry about it. I had it with all three of you. Or I didn't have that, but I've heard other people have. So, right. um, But my symptoms were fairly typical. Besides the migraines, they were mm. – it was a good pregnancy, right? relatively speaking. So then let's – you go to your first – doctor's appointment uh-huh. so they do the ultrasound and do you did your husband come with you yes he did okay. he came to every single appointment with me <laughs> for everything and I was like they're j- they're not even going to show us pictures of the babies you don't have to right come it's fine no I need to be there what if you can't make it in the elevator <laughs> well, I'm not that big <laughs> especially the first Thanks. month <laughs> right <laughs> But he did. He was very supportive through the whole thing. So he was there with me. And with his work schedule, it was flexible enough that he could. could do it. Right. Um, okay. So let's so. talk about that first ultrasound. So going in, did you have any inclination that there would be more than one? You know what's funny? Um, so when I was in high school at one point, I was walking through the halls and I saw a set of twins walking um, – next to me who I was friendly with and I was like I'm gonna have twins someday and it just like came and went and it was just matter of fact and I I let it go and then I would think about it every once in a while and my grandmother was a fraternal twin and my great aunts were twins so I thought you know it it is possible it's in my genetics to to potentially have twins um And then when my husband and I would talk about having kids, I explained that there are twins in my family, and he has a pair of cousins that are twins too, which um, from what I understand, it doesn't matter what's going on on his side. It's on the woman's side. side. (laughs) Um, So so I was like, good, you can feel like you had a part in this, sweetheart. That's whatever you need. Yeah, right. right. Mm -hmm. Um, but we kind of were like, yeah, when we would talk about having kids, we would say, yeah, and then we'll have twins. So it was kind of just matter of fact. And uh, we could do another episode on this, but we believe a lot in thoughts becoming things. So we would visualize and, and picture and talk about outcomes that we wanted. So we would always picture boy-girl twins because we just thought, like, why not? Right. How powerful can this visualizing stuff really be, this voodoo, woo-woo stuff? Like, right. sure. But we'll, we'll try it. Um, so we go into the first doctor's appointment and... I mean, we knew it was there, but as soon as I was pregnant, I was like, there's no way it's twins. I'm not nauseous enough for right. it to be twins. Right. Um, and the the technician who's doing the ultrasound goes, um, that heartbeat's really fast. Oh, there's two in there. <laughs> and my jaw drops, and I try to crane my neck to look at the, the images. Screen, right. And my husband goes, yeah, we figured so nonchalant the technician was like I have never gotten that response before (laughs) yeah like I would never think that that would be a thing like even if you think like oh it's a possibility I going in it's very hard to think like yeah and I was definitely like oh there's only it's only one like I never that that thought of having twins was was just a thought. It wasn't an actuality that I expected to come to fruition. Right. Um, so I had to pick my jaw up off the ground when I was like, 
holy smokes. And I wasn't, I don't know if I was surprised that we were pregnant with twins or that we had visualized it and had it actually happened. happened. Right. Like, <laughs> I was like, I don't know which one surprises me more, but oh my God. Right. And I think also being the woman who's the one who's actually pregnant, <laughs> hearing the news is maybe a little more impactful on you. Because yes. I mean, everything that goes through your mind yeah. at that point. And at that time where I was working, there were two other women pregnant, one other woman who was pregnant with twins, then I got pregnant with twins, and another teacher right. got pregnant. So we were all due within like six months of each other. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So yeah. it was crazy. And the joke in the math department was like, don't drink the water. <laughs> I don't know what they're having, but the whole math department's pregnant right now. There was a thing um, uh, earlier this year about this nurse, this nurse's unit um, in one of the hospitals. And it was like 12 out of 15 were pregnant. Oh. <gasps> Oh my and gosh. They were all do within like six months of each other. That's crazy. Yeah. So, I mean, that just. Happens. They have like their own natural made co op. I'm know. a little jealous, exactly. actually. Like, you have your own like little group. I know, for life. right? Yeah. Oh, that's kind so, of awesome. <laughs> yeah. So then you leave this appointment finding out you have twins. Yeah. And did you tell anyone at this point? It was so, only at weeks. that point, yeah. So, it was after Thanksgiving that we found out. And we told our family at Thanksgiving because if I was not feeling like eating, it would be really weird right. that I wasn't eating anything. So right. we had let our families know prior to that. So they knew we were pregnant, but they didn't know with twins. With twins. So um, the next time we – what ha- no. Okay, so we went out to dinner with – my brother-in-law and my sister-in-law, and we brought the ultrasound pictures and we just put them down and said, here, look at the babies. And they didn't even catch it. The babies part. The yeah. babies, yeah. And they were looking and all of a sudden they were both like, oh my God, oh my, there's more than one, oh my God. And so it was it was really nice to see their reaction in person. Um, yeah. And then we went to um, his parents' house and showed them the ultrasounds, and they they were also very surprised. Um, and then we had to call my husband's best friend. Um, my husband was in his wedding party for that July, the end of July, oh. and we were due at the end of July. And so my husband said to him, you know – uh, so we have to tell you some news and they didn't know yet because right. we, had told we hadn't told people. And he said, um, so I, I said, yes, that I would be in your wedding and I still really want to be. I just might not be able to. And he was devastated and like, what, what do you mean? And it's like, well, Taryn's pregnant with twins and he goes are you sure there's not a third one hiding behind those two and I was like that is not funny I I cannot process this so they found found out that we were pregnant because we wanted to let them know like if you wanted to change who was standing standing with you at your wedding we totally understood but they were like no you know what we'll play it by ear worst case scenario we'll have a picture of your head like he was very very sweet about it um and then we we told my family when we went to visit them next we wrapped up um bibs and it said um twin a and twin b Uh on it so they opened it and it was just really cute for them to see but we made a point of seeing them like that weekend because i was not gonna i don't withhold information from my mom and my sister like we're so close (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah well that's good so then um so you get through the first trimester Mm -hmm. and you didn't feel sicker at this point Um, you didn't start to feel like you were pregnant with twins no i i (sighs) But the doctors would even say when I showed up, like, oh, we have to keep checking the chart to see that you're pregnant with twins because your pregnancy is going pretty well for for someone who's pregnant. Besides the migraines, they had given me nausea medication for the migraines. And I was like, but I have migraines. So I found a um, chiropractor that worked, uh, that did prenatal work. And the chiropractor adjusted my back and she said, 
your body is just growing so fast that it knocked your your lumbar spine out of whack and that was pin- pinching a nerve causing migraines and as soon as she did that I didn't need the nausea medication and my migraines were virtually gone right which is so, awesome yeah so then it was just the typical nausea but I didn't get sick from it um I was growing incredibly fast and I, I had no point of reference Right. So I just assumed this is what everybody was going through. Right. And um, where did you get – when did you have to start wearing maternity clothes? Do you remember? Um. Well, so I was nauseous and wasn't eating for a really long time or not eating a lot. So I ended up losing weight the entire first trimester um, and started to need to, like, put rubber bands on my pants. I did that – the cool trick where I put, like, right. a rubber band around the button and then looped it around the the buttonhole. Right. Um, and uh, probably, I don't know, a couple weeks into the fr- second trimester, I was like, all right, it's time. Like, I can't hide the the bump anymore. Like, it's not – it's not hideable. Um and then that's when I started to put on some weight. Not a ton, right. but my, like, or I guess I wasn't putting on weight. It was just my body was changing. So I was still losing weight because I wasn't eating as much as I had been before. Everyone, you should know that before I got pregnant, I was overweight. So <laughs> so losing weight is not a bad thing. Like it was right. actually, they were like, actually, this is really healthy. And I was like, well, I'm craving pineapple and cream spinach. So mm. that's like all I'm eating. Uh, and my mother-in-law, who's so cute, was like, oh, if you crave it, you have to have it. You have to. And my husband was like, can't you crave like chocolate ice cream? Because I'd really like to use that as my excuse to eat ice cream too. And I was like, no, but I could really go for some more pineapple. <laughs> um, so I was losing weight, but it was it was all then going to my stomach. And my stomach was just getting so big that at uh, 28 weeks – I was measuring at a full-term single pregnancy. Okay. So. Yeah. yeah. Now, were you able to exercise at all while you were pregnant? Uh, I did prenatal yoga every week. um, And uh, I would walk every day. So I wasn't doing any cardio. cardio. I wasn't in Zumba. Like, I've seen women Zumba until they went into labor. That was not me. Right. I, I walked and I did yoga. And I slept all the time. Mm-hmm. I was a champion sleeper. I, especially that first trimester, I would come home from work. I would fall asleep. I would wake up after my husband cooked because I could not go into the kitchen and, like, look at raw meat or touch touch raw meat. So he had to prepare everything. I would wake up for maybe an hour to eat, and I would go back to sleep for the rest of the night. That's a lot of sleep. Yeah. Yeah, that that that's... happened for like two or three weeks straight. He was like, I think there is a problem. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I'm growing two humans. Like, <laughs> give me some space. Yeah, yeah. And I think, yeah, that tiredness, especially at the beginning, you just don't expect it. Right. And it's hard to explain to people because some people you haven't told and things like right. that. So I remember <laughs> sitting in my office at work And I was like, guys, I'm just so tired. I feel like I could put my feet up and fall asleep right here. So I jokingly put my feet up and literally fell asleep until my department chair opened the door and I like startled awake. And I was like, oh my gosh. And at that time, he didn't know I was pregnant. So I was like, he just thinks I was sleeping on the job. I'm going to get written up. It's going to go in my file. So that's the day I told him I was pregnant (laughs) with twins. (laughs) Yeah. So yeah, because it's... It's kind of weird. I think teaching is almost like a different career when you have to tell people that you're pregnant. Right. Because there's so many, like, factors that, you know, you have to – I mean, you you are going to um, have your kids, obviously, over the summer. But even right. so, like, when are you coming back and those things. And you want right. everyone to be – prepared and whatnot and obviously twins you never sh- know you never yeah. know and like, my my co-worker who was pregnant with twins she was due in February or March and she went on bed rest in like November yeah so you never know so yeah she was already on bed rest or was like two weeks away from bed rest when I found out I was pregnant with twins and I was like 
I'm going to end up on bed rest. I'm going to have complications like her. So of course I was nervous and I luckily didn't have many of those complications at all. Right. So then um, as you, so your pregnancy was going pretty well. Second second trimester was going. Second trimester was going well. well. I was really uncomfortable just by growing. Like I had one kid in my ribs and one kid on my bladder. So some people get one or the other and I had both and I just, but again, I didn't know any different. My, my classroom was on the third floor. So I would take the elevator and I would roll in my rolly chair around the classroom to make it work. Like I just did what I could. Yeah. Right. And, um, when did you start did you start decorating a room for the kids? Were they going to have their own rooms? Um, were you going to put them together? So we were in an apartment at the time that was a two-bedroom apartment, so they only had one space. Um, right. So we started decorating it. Uh, we found out it was boy-girl as soon as we could. So at the 20-week okay. ultrasound, we That's knew. We found out. Okay. Um, because I was like, uh, having twins is enough of a, a change. Like I need to feel like I have some sort of control over this, which – in reality, I had none. Right. But then I felt like I was like, ah, right. oh, but now I can paint the room a neutral color. Right, right. <laughs> so we were decorating it alphabet themed because alphabet's neutral. And right. then, I mean, after the kids were born, they didn't even sleep in the bedroom until we were almost ready to move out of the apartment. So I was like, oh, I'm so glad we did that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but it's almost like you like need that to like get through your pregnancy like yeah. you need that stuff to do right it and it gave me something to focus on so I wasn't feeling the the effects of my body changing like if I had something to do I could focus on that goal as opposed to like oh my god I feel huge oh my god I don't have ankles oh my god they're kicking they're having a fight right now like this right. is so uncomfortable oh my gosh my my rib is making my back hurt like oh man yeah. Oh, so did I, you take any classes while you were pregnant? Um, We did. And for us, it was a waste of money because we were like, oh, yes, we need to do this. We need to – everyone needs to have this birthing class. And it was right. – I think we had the choice between like three separate nights and one – longer class so we did the one longer class and the takeaway was you can have a birth plan but whatever is going to happen is going to happen and I was like so I just paid you to tell me that I shouldn't even have a plan right essentially now did you go to the hospital where you like was it yeah we had to do a hospital visit no uh-huh. did you when you did your class was it oh at your hospital? no it was at uh some other like, place some other like place? Okay. some girl scouts or boy scout headquarters or something <laughs> they had an open room it was through the hospital, hospital but it, but was, it was not spot. at the hospital okay but we did do a hospital walkthrough before right. we went into labor to just get to know the building like where do we pull up when right. she's about to deliver kids like what what do we do and we'll talk more about that in another episode yeah because we're already running you know a little longer than I wanted to so we'll have to do a separate birth story mm-hmm. but um was there anything special you had to do because you were having twins did you have to go for extra appointments or did they yeah so they things? they it, it was considered a high-risk pre- pregnancy even though it wasn't high risk for any reason besides the fact that it was multiple. So I just went a little bit more frequently, which was nice because I got a few more ultrasounds than a typical pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Um, And they would check up on me a little bit more frequently, which was good because at about 33 weeks, my blood pressure skyrocketed. So they were like, "Um, you're done with work. And what time of school year was this? This was in uh, May, Mm. April, May. Yeah, May. So um, if you don't know for high school teachers, that's like the most stressful. Well, it's all stressful. It's all stressful, but the end of the, the year end. is hyper stressful. Yes. Yeah. So so it was not a surprise to me that my blood pressure wasn't dropping, but they were concerned it was pre preeclampsia. Right. Um. So that was a Friday afternoon. I had the appointment, and they were like, "You're not going back on Monday." And I was like, "Ah!" So then I'm sure my blood pressure went up <laughs> even higher. But as soon as I got my subplan set and contacted the department chair and everything was in place every single time after that I went back my blood pressure was fine and it was like oh I guess I can't go back to work it's too stressful and I think that's part of like pregnancy is 
you have this plan like, okay, I'm going to work until this point. Right. I was going to work until the end of the school year. That was my goal because my due date was the end of July. So I was like, that'll give me four more weeks. And my pregnancy had been fine. There was no reason to not work besides it just being a little uncomfortable. Right. So yeah, it's definitely, um, it's like you said, you can have all the plans you want, but yeah, you never know what's going to happen. Right. So. so, and then at that point I was like, okay, babies, you can come whenever you want. And we had that conversation every day. Right. Uh, and they didn't come until I was 38 weeks pregnant. So I was at home for five weeks, like, oh God. And that's what I think is different. Like you could be home on bed rest and that I can't even imagine what that is like. Cause that no. seems like the worst thing. And then they just, you just can't work or it's right it's called modified bed rest yeah that's what it was for yeah. me where you just can't be on your feet as much and obviously as teachers you modify that the best you can but right guess what you can't you can't as a teacher you're running around like there's no way about it so I understood why I had to go on modified right. bed rest but I when I was on maternity leave I was able to clean a lot more because I was home and had nothing right. else to do and I remember so clearly I must have been 30 five or 36 weeks pregnant and I got down on my hands and knees to clean the toilet in the bathroom and I could not stand back up (laughs) physically I could not maneuver myself I don't know what was happening like my center of gravity was off but I couldn't even lean on the toilet to get up I had to crawl into the kitchen where I could like roll somehow to grab the telephone to call my husband who was working at that time literally Nearby. across the street, right. um, to come and get me up off the floor. Oh and I gosh. remember, like, talk about being humbled. Right. I called my mom in tears and was like, can you please come over this weekend to clean my house? Because I just couldn't get up off the floor. And she roared with <laughs> laughter. She thought it was so funny. And I was so grateful for her because she came with her cleaning supplies and she – my apartment was immaculate after she left and I could not thank her enough for it because I physically couldn't get into the so I did what I could I I folded laundry sitting down I I was able to do the dishes sitting down like I did what I could but there was not a lot right and it was just such a humbling experience to have to ask for help right and I think that's almost like what prepares you for when your child comes. Right. Because yeah. I'm, I'm a strong person and I right. can do this and I don't need anybody. And mm. that was how I was my whole life. Right. And here I was where I physically couldn't do it. Like if I had emotional right. stress, I'd be like, okay, it stinks, but I'll get it done somehow. But the, I, I, I can't even – express how limited I was in my movement I was waddling and I think my stomach entered the room about five minutes before I did by the time I went into the hospital my fingers couldn't touch at the end of my stomach oh my gosh I was giant yeah it is uh it is hard to all of a sudden not be able to see your feet anymore Mm -hmm. and just not yeah. And yeah. to feel helpless. Right. And then there's like, but I'm about to be a mom. Like, right. what if I'm like, what if I don't go back to the way I was? I like, oh my gosh. Yeah, it is. It's definitely, a, I think the beginning of pregnancy and even that middle pregnancy is like the fun part. Anyway. Yeah. You know, you get to, you have your shower and mm-hmm. like you get to do all the fun things. And then yeah. like near the end, it's like reality sets right. in and you're like, wait what's about to happen (laughs) right yeah and and I feel like that second trimester it's like oh you're so cute and pregnant like it's not that first trimester where it's like is she just putting on a lot of weight right or is she pregnant I can't tell so the first trimester is kind of that like I I wish I could tell people so they don't think I'm just eating ice cream by the gallons every night and ordering pizza. And then the second trimester when your tummy pops and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so cute. And like people know you're actually pregnant. It's so exciting. And then third trimester comes and the kids decide to grow at rocket speeds. And you're like, oh my God, this is no longer comfortable. Right. Yeah. And I think everyone, yeah, it's just like people can tell you about it. And people can explain what happened to them uh-huh. until it happens to you. 
you just don't even realize. Right. It. Listen to the stories and hear right. what they say, but know that I cannot put into words the actual physical and emotional feelings that were going on in my body when I was pregnant because you can't explain it to anyone and have them truly understand it until they've experienced it. Right. Same goes for the exhaustion after they're born. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so this is like a weird question, but there's a difference between enjoying your pregnancy and loving being pregnant as opposed to being grateful that you are pregnant. Yes. So how would you describe your pregnancy? Was it you enjoyed it, it was great, or was were you just grateful f- for the aspect of being pregnant? Uh, so before I got pregnant, I was like, I am made to be a mom. I am going to love being pregnant. It's going to be the best part of my life. The day I found out I was pregnant and had that heartburn... I was miserable for the next nine months. Yeah. I was like, people who say they love being pregnant are liars. I don't know why I even listened to them. So I thought I was going to love and enjoy being pregnant. And in fact, I hated it. I was uncomfortable and I truly attribute it to being pregnant with twins. So like I was measuring a full-term single pregnancy at 28 weeks and I still went 10 more weeks right so like I think that's part of why I I didn't enjoy it as much as I wanted to but the gratitude that I had that I was able to conceive easily right and I was able to have a typical pregnancy for 38 weeks like with twins like I could not express my my gratitude enough Right. I would thank my doctors. I would bring them pastries. I would thank my mm-hmm. husband. I would thank my in-laws and my family for being so supportive. Like I was just so excited to be a mom and honored that I was given the opportunity to do it. Right. Because not everyone gets that chance. And I think that that gets overlooked sometimes. Right. And um, I think there's a real big difference for being grateful to be pregnant right. and go through being pregnant as opposed to loving your pregnancy and loving every minute of it. Uh-huh. Because I think sometimes it's just not, that's just not what it is. Right. And I think you don't hear those stories. Yeah. I And I actually made a huge mistake when I was in labor that we can talk about at another time yeah. based around this this idea and this that concept. That supposed to be. That, yeah. yeah. And that and the fact that I was not what I pictured in my mind. Right. I, I definitely pictured like I was going to be so cute and, and bubbly right. and I was – I had headaches for right. like four straight months and I, I was – it was not – it was not a pretty pregnancy. Right. And I think – I think it's good to understand, even if you are not pregnant yet, or, you know, you don't have to have the best pregnancy. I remember right. um, I followed uh, Whitney Port, um, who used to be on the hills, who apparently is coming back on the hills. Hey! In their <laughs> remake, because apparently everything we've done so far in our lives, we need the remake of. Yeah. Um, everything. Yes. So she she did a vlog um, of her whole pregnancy, and that was basically her thing is – um, I think her vlog is, um, I love my baby, but, um, and that that's was kind of, great. Right. Like yeah. she was very grateful to be pregnant and she, you know, she knew she was going to love her son, but she had a very difficult pregnancy and it took her a very long time to come around to be happy, even mm-hmm. to be pregnant. Right. Um, and I think that's something that people struggle with because, you know, you might've been trying forever or, you know, it might've happened on the first time or whatever, right. like you don't even know. And all of a sudden it's like, you're so, you had the people think that you should just be happy all the time. Right. You know? And they're all, Oh, congratulations. And you're right. there trying not to throw up on their shoes. Right. Like. <laughs> <laughs> or you're trying to just like keep your eyes open at that right. point. Right. Know? It's like, there's so many things and, um, the people just, I think that they just, get caught up sometimes yeah thinking that everyone should be happy all the time right so yeah all right so that will wrap up the episode obviously we did not get to talk about Taryn's delivery and whatnot um so that will be on a future episode and um it will not be graphic it will be clean (laughs) (laughs) um so 
um, yeah, we would love to hear about your pregnancies and how yeah. you all um, felt about your pregnancies. So. What weird symptoms did you have that you didn't know about before right. you were pregnant? Right. Yeah. And I'll have um, I'll have some show notes um, under the podcast about um, some books that Taryn um, used during her pregnancy that you might find useful. And um, so you can check that out at Mommy Escape Time on the website, mommyescapetime.com. And then you could follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and um, Facebook at Mommy Escape Time. Although, again, Twitter, I don't know how much longer we're going to use that. (laughs) I'm just sending it to myself all the time. So, um, yeah, let us know. Um, Subscribe to us on iTunes. And, you know, if you want to give us a review, that'd be great, too. So that will wrap it up. So thank you, Taryn, for telling us your story. Anytime. I hope I help someone. Yes. And we (laughs) hope to hear from some of you soon, too. Yes. Bye. Bye.